In late 2018, I got interested in building an Ariane 6 model. This is particularly interesting because of the drop-away boosters. While I'd looked into drop-away boosters in the past, I never actually built a model that used them. When I'd considered drop-away boosters in the past, I usually thought of some sort of explosive bolts or something else that's impractical downscaled. So the thing that actually started me working on this project was thinking about how the dropway boosters could work. Because of the way they're attached in the prototype, it leads to a natural idea for a similar attachment in the model. So here's a cutaway view of the boosters themselves. The entire forward end, as well as the aft end for its detail, would be 3D printed. Only the aft section, which was cylindrical, would use a traditional airframe tube and of course standard plywood bulkheads to center the motor mount to. The really interesting part here is the two aluminum brackets that retain and keep the boosters aligned during the short period of time that they provide thrust. The bracket you can see on the left is the key to the drop away nature. It's retained inside the booster by a solenoid. The aft bracket on the right presses against the aft end of the sustainer transferring the thrust from the booster motors to the sustainer airframe. Here's the pile of parts. Here's the motor mount assembly with the aft end detail and you can see how the retainer attaches in the back and gives you the profile of the nozzle. Of course mechanically the most interesting is the forward end made of four pieces. We have the base, we have the midsection which I've notched, and the nose tip which is made in two pieces so that the aluminum forward bracket can insert between them. And this also keys into the mid section to keep everything in alignment. I'm lucky to have a CNC router with a fourth axis to make radial cuts. Drilled holes for the shear pins. 90 degrees around. Slot to key the 3D printed nose section. Finally a cutout to make space for the aft bracket. And here it is just off the machine. The space for the aft bracket. Screw shear pin holes, one on each side and an alignment slot for the nose. I didn't want the parts to come loose in the CNC router so I finished off these slots by hand. With everything cleaned up you can see how the motor mount assembly fits into the airframe with the relief for the aft bracket. And a close-up showing how the 3D printed part fills in the gap in the airframe tube. And then bonding time. First the aft 3D printed detail attached to the aft bracket. I used the motor retainer screws to hold it in place temporarily. Then bonding that inside the airframe tube. Spreading epoxy inside the airframe tube first and then sliding the part in. And of course, clamping everything to keep things uniform and tightly fitted. Once the individual sections were cured, I was able to test fit everything. First, the nose into the airframe, and then retention with the shear pin screws. This video makes it look really quick, but it took a lot of hours to figure this out print all the parts, manufacture everything, and get to the point where all four boosters were assembled. And my personal favorite final touch is how the 3D printed retainers simulate the nozzle of the prototype. And then the forward bracket retention. This is the most complex single part in this rocket, so I go to a fair amount of detail here. Those brackets sticking out of the booster nose cones insert through slots in the airframe through these slots in the centering ring 
and engage with the solenoids to retain them. The solenoids are mounted to aluminum brackets with a little bit of vertical adjustment for fine tuning at the end. And finally you can see everything mounted up on the ring. I built a small breakout board and then a three cell lipo can fire all the solenoids. That makes a very satisfying snap. The ring even jumps. And then it was time to turn back to the airframe. First the slots and the screw retention holes in the midsection of the airframe and then the corresponding slots and holes in the coupler in the forward end of the aft section. Then the retention ring slides inside the coupler and the forward brackets on the boosters slide through the slots and engage with the solenoids on the ring. And then to mount each booster, first the forward retainer slots in and I have to release the solenoid through the access hole. Then the aft thrust plate has to be slipped onto the pins and the booster slid the rest of the way forward. That allows the solenoid to engage. The business end with all four boosters installed looks quite nice if I say so myself. And then to test the drop away mechanism. First I disengage the solenoids by manually connecting them to the battery. Then I simulate the sustainer motor start by lifting up the airframe. And then with a little pressure, such as air friction, the booster drops away. I'll probably tune this to drop away even more easily.